Hey everybody, it's Miss Barry. So in this video, we're going to go over section 9.1, which is called Understanding Personal Finance. In this um, section, we're going to talk about um, some things like budgets. We'll talk about taxes. We'll talk about um, stuff like tipping, um, like at a restaurant. We'll talk about sale prices. So just some basics <clears throat> of personal finance. So let's start off by discussing what net, come in, net income is. So your net income, whoops, let me try that again. Your net income is equal to your total income. So your, your total paycheck minus your taxes. Um, your total income is sometimes called your gross income. So you may have seen it referred to that way, um, like when you fill out your taxes um, or when you look at your W-2, your total income is also called your gross income. All right, so let's look at an example where, we'll, where we are told how much we're paying in taxes when we're going to figure out um, how much we have to pay. All right, so this will be number one. It says, Caleb was recently hired for a job with an annual income of $49,000. Using the federal income rate of 15%, what, is, what amount should Caleb expect to pay in federal income tax? All right, so this is just his federal taxes. Um, you also have to pay state taxes. Um, but here we're just looking at how much Caleb is paying in his federal taxes. So we're going to take the amount of money that he makes, which is 49000 and we're going to multiply that by 15%. Now, we need to convert this to a decimal first. So let's go over here. 15% as a decimal. You just move the decimal two places to the left, so that would be 0.15 or 0 0.15. All right, so we're multiplying that by 0.15. All right, so go ahead and get out your calculator. <clears throat> I'll pull up my document camera so you can see my calculator. I'm using my TI-36X Pro today. Go ahead and clear out your screen. All right. Let's see if we can get these both on the screen at one time. Okay. All right, so we're taking 49,000 times 0.15. All right, so Caleb should expect to pay about um, $7,350 in taxes um, if he makes 49,000 this year. All right, so Caleb's paying 7350 for his federal income taxes. Um, if I'm doing this <clears throat> for myself, then I usually um, expect um, my job to take out about 25% between like taxes, like state and federal taxes, and then like insurance and retirement stuff. Um, <clears throat> so let's say that Caleb's gonna do the same thing Maybe he's expecting his work to take out about 25%. <clears throat> so that would be 49,000, <clears> excuse me, times 0.25. So that means all together. So that would be like stuff like insurance, state and federal taxes, maybe a retirement or a pension or um, some kind of like 401k. Um, he would expect to have his work take out about $12,250. That's for the entire year. Now, if you wanted to figure out how much is that per month, you would just take that amount and divide it by however many paychecks that you're getting in a year. So let's say that Caleb's getting 12 paychecks in a year. He's getting paid once a month. So that would be about $1,020.83 per paycheck. So that's just a little aside for you. Like I said, I... 
that's my guesstimate for like how much of my paycheck goes towards things like insurance, um, taxes, and retirement is about 25% of my paycheck. So this is how I would figure out how much is getting taken out per paycheck or per pay period. This is number two. <clears throat> so here we're given like a little budget. It says using the information provided in the given table, determine how much monthly income would be necessary to budget for personal expenses over the nine month academic year. So it's saying that um, <clears throat> we have all of these fees. We have university fees, room and board, books and supplies, transportation, personal health insurance and loan fees. And we need to figure out how much we need to save um, over each month, over that nine month period. So we're just going to take all these numbers and we're going to add them together. And then divide by nine. That's going to tell us how much we need to save or how much monthly income would be necessary to budget for um, these expenses over those nine months. All right, so let's go ahead and figure out how much we're going to need to save per month. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so I'm adding together all of my expenses. 19784 plus 8625 plus 1922 plus 9929 plus 1163. Just be careful typing these in. Take your time. Plus 875 plus 180. All right, so that's the total. $33,478. So that's the estimated total cost. Um, for this person's local college. And they're paying this um, each month over a nine month period. So we're going to divide that by nine. So it says round to the nearest cent. Cent would be um, two decimal places. <clears throat> so that would be 37, 19, and 78 cent per month. Remember, we're not using 12 months year because this is over, they told us it was over a nine month academic year. All right, so. Let me just highlight that. All right, so since it was over, they were just looking at the nine month academic year we just needed to plan for those expenses to be paid over those nine months. All right. I think we have one more example, and then we're going to go on and look at something different. Yeah. All right. So this is number three. All right. So it says the value of your stock investment in a certain company decreased 30% over the last year. If the value of your stock investment is $10,000 today, then what was the value of your stock investment a year ago? Okay. <clears throat> All right, so here's how I would like to think of this. Let's, we don't know what the original value of the stock was, so we'll just say that we had some kind of, um, the stock was equal to some value, then it decreased 30%. 30% as a decimal would be 0 0.30. So it went down 30% of its original value, and it ended up being worth $10,000. All right, so let's replace these this word value with a variable. We can use V if you want to, or you could use X. Let's just use X because we're used to seeing X. So X minus 0 0.30 X equals 10,000. Combine your like terms. This is like a little one in front here. So one minus 0 0.30 is 0 0.70 X equals 10,000. 
To get x by itself, we would divide both sides by 0.7. All right, so let's see what that original value of the stock was. Delete everything, clear that out. 10,000 divided by 0.7. So there's the original value of the stock, $14,285 and then 71 cents. So I'm just rounding to the nearest cent. So 14,285, whoops. That was a terrible dollar sign. Let me try, start over. 14,285 and 71 cent. That was the original value of the stock before its value went down. Or that was the original value of your stock investment. That was not just one stock. It was your entire stock investment. <clears throat> All right. So next we're going to talk about um, using percentages for consumer purchases. So we'll talk about like um, when things go on sale, discounts. And then I'll also throw in some stuff about like um, when you're tipping at a restaurant. <clears throat> Again, this is all pretty basic stuff. So you may already know some of this. Um, the list price of an item is just the price of an item as it is listed for public sale. So this again is just the price of an item that is listed for public sale. Very basic definition. So the discount of an item is when you have a reduction from the list price. And typically it's given as some kind of percentage. So um, like if you go to somewhere like Belk, you may see a rack that says like 25% off. So that would be the discounted price, or excuse me, that would be the discount <clears throat> or the reduction from the list price. All right, so the sale price, sometimes called the net price, um, is the price after the discount. So you take, you have your sale price, is equal to um, the list price minus some discount. So this is the price of the item after some kind of discount is applied. So again, this may be, um, you kind of have to pay attention to the way some of these things are worded. Um, like for example, I got something in the mail the other day that said um, $30 off of $100. So $30 compared to $100, that's 30% of 100. So it's sort of like 30% discount, but the caveat is that you have to spend $100. So it is different to say that take $30 off of $100. That is different than to say 30% off. So you have to be careful with your wording. Be careful when you're reading the wording. All right, so let's look at some examples. Um, let's see what number this is. Number four and then number five. <clears throat> okay, so start off with an easy one. It says a refrigerator with a list price of $2,700 will be discounted 25% at the time of the purchase. What is the sale price before taxes? So we're going to take, we got to figure out what's 25% um, of 2,700. All right, so get your, get your calculator out. All right, so we have, clear everything out. Let me see if I turn the light on. If that's that's a little better, I think. Refocus. All right. So, 
2,700, 25% off of that would be, whoops, I keep hitting the wrong button. Let me just clear that off and start over. 2,700 times 0.25. So that means we're going to get to take 675 off of the total price. So we're going to take 2700 minus our discount of 675. So we're going to pay $2000 $2025 for this refrigerator after our discount. <clears throat> so that was the sale price before taxes. So that was a pretty easy one. Now this next one is um, sort of similar to what we did with the stock investment. It says, Mia found a receipt for a pair of boots for $144.89, tax included. If the sales tax rate was 5%, what was the list price of the boots? Round your answer to the nearest cent. All right, so the first thing we have to do is we have to figure out, um, you know, if we're, if we're paying 5% tax, we have to set up a little equation to help us figure out um, what the list price was. That's what we're looking for. All right, so let's say that we have, whoops, there we go. We had some kind of list price and then we had to pay tax on that and it was a 5% tax rate. So that's 0 0.05 as a decimal. So that's 0 0.05 times the list price. And that was equal to the total. <clears throat> All right, so we don't know the list price. That's what we're looking for. So let's represent that with an X. That's our variable. Our total was 144.89, so we can write that in. All right, so again, there's like a little one out here. One plus 0.05 would be 1.05x equals 144.89. All right, so now we're gonna divide both sides by 105. We're trying to get x by itself so we can figure out what the list price is. Okay, so 144.89 divided by 1.05. All right, we're rounding to the nearest cent, so that would be 137.99 was the price of the boots. Okay. Mm. All right. They could make this problem even harder by adding in something like, um, say, like the boots were on sale 25% off. What was the original price of the boots? So this would be like the sale price. Then we would have to go on and find out what was the original price. Um, now, I was thinking about this and I was thinking that um, some people's first instinct might be to do something like this. They might say, okay, well, we'll just take 144.89, figure out what's 5% of that. And that's how much you paid in taxes. So take, say like 144.89 minus how much you paid in taxes, 724. That is not the same. So notice that we have 137.99. This says 137.65. So that is not the same thing. So make sure you do it this way that I have written down here and not by just multiplying by 5% and then subtracting that, um, thinking that that's how much you paid in taxes. All right, so just be careful on those. All right, we have, this is number six. This is another um, easy one. It says, at a restaurant, your total bill is 1745. <clears throat> you wish to give a tip amount of 15% of the total bill. What is the amount of the tip? Round your answer to the nearest cent. Um, so the way that I do this is that I typically 
um, would just round this number to something. If I'm trying to do this in my head, I would just round this to an easy number to work with, say like $80. And then I would say, like, okay, well, 10% of $80 would be $8. So if I wanted to give, um, say, 20%, that would be double that amount. So that would be $16. Um, that's the way I would do it in my head if I was at a restaurant. But you could easily get out your phone and do this if you wanted to calculate it exactly. Um, so you would just take your total bill, 78.45, and then multiply that by 0.15, um, which is 15% as a decimal. Always converting those percentages to decimals. All right, so 78.45 times 0.15 is, there's our total. Again, we're going to round this to the nearest cent, so that's the second decimal place. So that would be 11.77 would be our tip. Um, <clears throat> if I'm doing this at a restaurant, I would typically try to give like a whole number amount just because I'm thinking like, okay, well, if this person has to like cash out at the end of the night, um, I know I wouldn't want to have to count through like 77 cents. So I would just give them like $12 instead of 11.77. So that is exactly 15%. But again, you could always adjust that if you want to make it easier for yourself to add up the total or easier for the person to cash out their tip. You could round up or round down to the nearest whole number. All right, so percentage change, that's our next topic. Um, there's a formula for the percentage change. So here is the formula. Percentage change is equal to Um, so it's the new value minus what they're calling the reference value divided by the reference value. So you can see here what's happening is um, you're taking like how much did the value change compared to the original value. So how much did the price go up or price go down um, divided by the original value? <clears throat> this is something that you may want to write on your um, index card for our next test. See, it takes forever for the highlighter to come up. So again, this is maybe something you want to write down on your index card. All right, so let's switch back to the pen. We're on number seven. The years, do not you do not have to use the years at all in these problems, okay? So it says the average price of a certain model of a pickup truck in 1994 was $14,500. In 2011, the average price of the pickup truck was $23,200. So it went up, it started at $14,500 and then it went up to $23,200. It says, what is the percentage increase in the average price of the pickup truck? Right, so this time um, we're looking at percentage change. This time it's an increase. So we'll say percentage increase is equal to... Um, so it's the new value. So the new value of the truck is 23,200 minus the reference value or the original value that we're comparing it to was 14,500 divided by the reference value, 14,500. So let's get our calculator. Um, my calculator has this little fraction button right here. So I'm going to use that little fraction button. If yours doesn't have that fraction button, you could just put the numerator in parentheses. So type the whole thing, put the numerator um, in parentheses like this, and then divide by the reference value. I'm going to use the little um, fraction button. 23,200 minus 14,500. Be careful, make sure you got the right amount of zeros in there. Divided by 14,500. Um, my calculator gives me back a fraction, and I need a decimal. So I have this little button down here. It's kind of hard to see. 
um, with the glare, but it's kind of like a double-sided arrow. Um, and that's going to switch it to a decimal for me. So I just press that button. You can see that gave me 0 0.6. Um, if I made that into a percentage, I would just move the decimal over twice, one, two. So that would be 60% increase in price. So the truck had a 60% increase in price from 94 to 2011. <clears throat> we have one more, um, which is another one of those stock questions. All right, this again is number eight. It says the value of your stock investment decreased by 26% after a stock market crash. What percentage increase in value would the stocks have, have to rise to in order to return to the value they were before the stock market crash? Round your answer to the nearest tenth of a percent. <clears throat> I would say this is probably the hardest question on this homework assignment. Um, so they don't tell us what our original value was in our stock, and they don't they don't tell us what our ending value was for our stock. But we can use an easy number like one thousand um, as our sort of like our reference value. So let's say that your stock. Um, was valued at $1,000, and then it decreased by 26%. All right, so they told us it decreased by 26%. So let's figure out what's 26% of 1,000. So 1,000 times 0. 0.26. This is an easy one to calculate. This would be 260. So that means... We started out at 1000 we went down $260. So if you subtract those, let's see, 1000 minus 260 is 740. All right, so now our stock is valued at 740. So let's figure out what percentage increase would we have to see to get back up to 1000. All right, so percentage increase is equal to, remember it's the new value. We want it to get to 1,000 um, minus our reference value. Right now it's valued at 740 divided by our reference value of 740. All right, so let's um, type this in our calculator. All right, so little fraction button, 1,000 minus 740 over 740. All right, so it gives me a fraction. Let me convert that to a decimal. And there we go. It says to round to um, the nearest tenth of a percent. So see if we move this over one, two decimal places, that would be 35.1%. So the stock would have to rise 31.5% <clears throat> to get back up to 1,000 or whatever your original value was. Again, we just picked a thousand because that's an easy number to work with. You could also have picked a hundred. Um, that would be another easy number to work with. So you're just picking like a starting value um, to give us real numbers to work with. All right, so that is everything for section 9.1, which again was called understanding personal finance. Um, this was not all of the questions out of this section. So if you do have any other questions, um, over section 9.1, just email me and let me know. Otherwise, I will um, talk to you guys soon.